if you're like a primary care physician and, and 95% of the people walk in your, your, your office are, and most people that go to the doctor are kind of sick. So you're like, well, yeah, everybody comes in here, you know, they're, they're, they're overweight, they're pre-diabetic. Here's your statin, right? Or here's your PCSK9 inhibitor or whatever. That's probably reasonable. But if you got people in there like, look, wait a minute, I'm lean, I work out, my blood glucose is normal, my triglycerides are normal, my HDL is high, I have no inflammation. Wait a minute, maybe I'm, maybe I don't, maybe this doesn't apply to me. Most physicians aren't exposed to that to know the difference. And so there it is. They get an algorithm. Literally, when I was, you know, when I was actively clinically practicing, you know, you would get literally, you know, computer reminders. Oh, look, this, you know, this flags it. Here's a red flag. Well, you better prescribe this drug kind of like to help you all right to help you and and yeah most people do it okay yeah okay here you go because if you don't do that then you got all these damn red flags you got to justify why you didn't do it like well that's more work this damn that's more work for me I'll let's get out of the prescription get him out of my office yeah algorithmic medicine is is an issue especially because it creates sort of a, a bilateral issue both on the patient side and the physician side because you have the patient that's generally not educated and sort of is going to the doctor for, for the right thing to do, like with good intention, usually. And then you have the physician that is now, I mean, there, there's so many variables. Like I actually hate blaming one side or the other because it's just, it's just like a conflated systematic problem that we've had developing for a long period of time. So I don't like to point specific fingers, but I, I, it is sort of like at the end of the day, uh, up to education for, on people to hopefully make better decisions and become better critical thinkers. I think that's really the solution is to create better critically thinking people. And then you can sort of sort these things out for yourself. It's just that you have to have the intuition or desire to be curious about it, which not everyone has innately. Um, but hopefully like through things like this, more and more people, as we've seen, like we've seen a lot of gains in like even the cardboard mu movement over the last five years since you've written your book, certainly that's very promising. Yeah, I mean, it's like I said, you're not going to be able to save everybody. And, you know, you know, you know, when you look at like just when it goes to like food buying, I mean, most people, probably 95 percent of the people still, what does it taste like and how much does it cost? And that's that is their decision algorithm. And that's, you know, it tastes good and it's cheap. That's that's a problem, obviously. But I mean, you, you know, like I said, it is a slow process to educate. And we've been sort of I always I always, you know, there's Mark Twain has this funny saying. He says, I was educated once. It took me years to get over it, you know. And so uh, it's like, you know, you, even as a physician, you know, I say I figured I came to this conclusion despite the fact that I was a physician because I was trained in this sort of traditional model. And, you know, and, and you know, I mean, like I said, it's 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 rigorous training and you are you learn a lot. But at the same time, you're you're kind of intentionally directed it on a certain path and, and you got a very like you said sort of a one way of thinking about things and when it when all of a sudden you know somebody says something different you're like well oh, those people are what is these homeopathy people these crazy ass wackos you know it's anything that questions what you've been taught in medical school or being taught by uh, your continuing medical education was paid by the pharmaceutical industry is considered dangerous wrong quackery and it's hard to break free of that. And, you know, like I said, the, the only reason I did was because I, you know, sort of was looking at my own health and sort of noticed some things and then had the audacity to try diets on my patients and saw some really interesting things. And so, but I, I would have learned that in a book or, or a research paper that was available to me. So I was kind of like, just kind of serendipitously kind of came across this stuff. And uh, as a lot of people are discovering this now, and as you mentioned, it is, it's growing quite well. I mean, it's kind of funny, you know, that you talk about the carnivore thing. And like I said, I'm obviously a carnivore advocate, but I don't, I, you'll never hear me saying it's the only way and everybody needs to do that and all this stuff. Some, I, you know, I hear some people in, within the community say that. I kind of like, I look at it like, well, maybe that might be not the most effective way to get the message out there. But, um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's certainly growing. I mean, I think, I think, like I said, I think the cream will rise to the top, the, 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 the top, the truth will eventually prevail. It's hard to, you know, there's a lot of, you know, as you guys know, we're in a very contentious time. People are b battling about politics and wars and COVID and all this crap. And everybody has an opinion. And it's hard to really know the truth in some of those instances. Like, you know, like we'll say the climate like stuff. I I literally can't tell. I mean, I, there's no way for me to independently verify whether the climate is changing or not or what ocean temperatures up or down I, or the Arctic ice sheet. I just don't have the luxury to be able to fly up there or have a, you know, ocean thermometer that I can, you know, calibrate with. But what I can do is I can assist my own health 
very easily. I mean, it's quite apparent to me when I feel good and when I don't, when I when I when I'm fat, when I'm lean, you know, when I join hurt and when they don't. And so that's something that's hard to sort of gaslight people out of. I think we're seeing at least in that aspect, people are saying, Hey, wait a minute, I, I'm literally better and you can't discon you you cannot unconvince me of that. You can't un you can't gaslight me and and, and they tell me I was better before when I was fat, sick and everything hurt, right? I mean it just it's hard to do that, right? 